In this video, we'll show you how to measure to high precision an aperture with uncertain dimensions. For our example, we'll use this adjustable slit, which is convenient, but we don't know the extent to which we can trust the micrometer reading because the manufacturer does not provide tolerances. We can feel backlash in turning the mechanism in alternating directions, so we're particularly suspicious about the performance at small widths. We also don't know the extent to which the center of the slit stays constant as the aperture is changed. The internal mechanism moves the left and right jaws in equal and opposite directions with a precision micrometer, so the biggest calibration error is likely the zero offset. We could use a feeler gauge or gauge blocks to measure the slit opening, but we might damage the jaws. The natural way to characterize an optical component is to use an optical system. We use a linear CCD and diffraction theory to make the measurement. Although we have commercial 2D cameras on hand, they are bulky and require several steps to get the data from the raw images into a format we can interpret. On the other hand, a one-dimensional CCD is compact, has fast readout, requires no two-dimensional image processing, is not dependent on proprietary software, and the entire setup can be assembled for about $40. This example uses the TCD1304 Toshiba CCD, which consists of a linear array of 3,648 photodiodes spanning a total of 29 millimeters. Each CCD pixel integrates a photocurrent such that the voltage that appears on the output is directly proportional to the incident illumination. CCDs are similar to their more common CMOS cousins, except in CCDs, the photoelectrons are transferred to an analog shift register for amplification. In CMOS detectors, each pixel is an independent photodiode circuit with on-pixel amplification. In this microscope image, you can see the electrodes connecting the individual 8 micron pixels to the shift gate in analog shift register. Retrieval of data from the CCD requires generation of three digital clock patterns. The data sheet calls for a master clock frequency of at least 800 kilohertz, which sets the speed requirement for the data system. Don't try running a CCD slower than its spec rate, charge transfer will fail. There are four master clock cycles per pixel, so the data rate must be at least 200 kilosamples per second. The popular AT Mega chip used in the Arduino Uno can only digitize at 10 kilosamples per second, so is not suitable. The ARM Cortex-M chips available on many development boards, including the Arduino DUE and STM32 Nucleo, run faster and have more memory. The SAM 3x8E chip on the DUE has a built-in ADC capable of sampling 12-bit data at 1 megasample per second. With 96 kilobytes of SRAM storage, it can also store multiple readouts of data, and the native USB speed of 480 megabits per second can easily keep up with continuous readout. The Arduino IDE and DUE libraries are easy to install, and there's a large community of users contributing to the Arduino forum. The three clocks are the Master CCD Clock Phi, which clocks out the pixels, the Integration Clear Gate, ICG, which triggers the start of the readout, and the Shift Gate, SH, which fixes exposure time. We made these three clocks using the PWM controller. No sequential instructions are used. By setting PWM control registers defining the period, duty cycle, and phase of each clock, the clocks run autonomously and synchronously with the SAM3X clock. The only tricky part is mapping components of the PWM module to physical pins. To replicate this, choose a DUE pin that maps to a PWM channel. Then use the listed port pin together with table 38.2 in the SAM3X datasheet to identify the peripheral. With the clocks enabled, we can connect the CCD pins to the DUE, and the digital and analog signals can be viewed on a scope. The orange peak between ICG pulses is light from a slit centered on the CCD. The analog output of the CCD decreases with increasing illumination. In this video, we are again viewing a slit, but inverting the yellow scope trace to make the display more intuitive. Zooming in, individual pixels can be seen. To digitize the data, a signal synchronous with the clocks must be generated to trigger the ADC. This can be done with a SAM3X timer counter module. The ADC conversion is initiated on the rising edge of the blue sync pulse. The TCD1304 datasheet shows a transistor drive circuit, but we found the output impedance of the output amplifier is low enough to drive a short length coax. The majority of the 12 bit range of the ADC can be used by setting the ADC gain and offset. The SAM3X built-in ADC supports direct memory access and buffer swapping, so data are transferred automatically to a user-defined array as conversions continue. Here's the whole system working together with the illuminated slit shining on the CCD. The analog signal is shown on the scope, and the digital signal appears on the laptop. Clock pickup on the analog signal, which appears as noise on the scope, is absent in the digital signal because the ADC samples between clock pulses. 
To test the noise and linearity of the CCD, we made a grayscale target so that the pixels exhibited the full dynamic range from close to zero signal up to saturation. An ideal detector shows only Poisson noise associated with the detection of individual photons. Practical detectors have fixed additional noise or read noise, which becomes dominant at low illumination. Thus, a CCD should show a linear relationship between the mean signal and the variance with an intercept equal to the read noise squared. We computed a pixel-by-pixel -pixel mean and variance for an ensemble of dark subtracted scans. Here's the result. Each point represents an individual pixel, the red line is the best straight line fit. The results show the CCD is linear up to approximately 2000 ADU and the read noise is 51 electrons RMS. With our new detector, we're ready to measure the width of our adjustable slit. We illuminate the slit with a 637 nanometer collimated beam and place a detector far enough away for the Fresnel approximation to be valid. The diffraction pattern is determined by the wavelength, slit detector distance, and slit width. In our setup, the first three are fixed and measured accurately and independently beforehand. Adjusting the slit width changes the diffraction pattern and allows us to fit for the unknown width in real time. While adjusting the slit width, we recorded the fitted width in the micrometer setting in order to calibrate the slit mechanism. Our results confirm our visual inspection that the micrometer zero does not correspond to zero width. The offset is about 37 microns. With these calibration results, we can now reliably use the slit at small openings. Overall, the micrometer scale is accurate within our ability to measure wavelength, slit detector distance, and pixel size. However, there is a clear departure from linearity seen in the residuals of a straight line fit. The deviation is about 20 microns over the full span, or a 0.4% nonlinearity. As the jaws are open, the slit center also drifts systematically. The wander is roughly 20 microns peak to peak. We were really encouraged by the performance of this simple and inexpensive 1D Toshiba CCD. The choice of the Arduino DUE allowed easy development of a low-noise, fast, and flexible detector with no additional required components. Fresnel theory provides an accurate and rapidly computable prediction of the complex diffraction pattern through a slit, enabling a simple way to accurately set an adjustable aperture on the fly. In the future, we may use our 1D detector for other applications, such as active beam control, optical alignment, spectroscopy, or Gaussian beam characterization. Please stay tuned if you're interested. Thanks for watching.